I have a pleasant time trying to sing a cotton mill rhyme. Live in Belmont, a lousy town, working in a cotton mill a whole year round. Got a cotton mill blues, got a cotton mill blues, got a cotton mill blues on my mind. Education. My name is Kenny Rohr. I'm a retired history professor. Uh, I grew up in a family where if you didn't play music, they'd put you out in the street. You know, my dad played fiddle, my brother played guitar, and my grandfather, my great-grandfather all played music. And they were part of those families that migrated out of the mountains in the late 1800s to work in the cotton mills. You had an enormous increase in uh, cotton mills in the South in the period from 1880 to 1900. The number of cotton mill workers went from around 17,000 in the South to almost 100,000 in a period of only 20 years. And of course, uh, the folks in the mountains uh, lived a very hard, difficult life with little or no cash income. Uh, for example, my family up in Franklin County probably made about $200 a year uh, there in the 1880s and 1890s. So when you were offered a job where you would be paid cash money and you'd have a house and you'd have conveniences like stores and doctors and so on and so forth, it was a great magnet. And of course, a lot of the folks who moved out of the mountains were illiterate. Uh, and they work for very low wages. Now, the mills took on kind of a paternalistic attitude toward these people they recruited out of the hill country. And remember the people who moved out of the hill country changed only their mailing addresses. They brought their culture with them. Music and dancing and storytelling was a large part of their lives. So when they moved into the mill villages, they came in contact with other musicians from other counties that they otherwise would have never known in their whole lives. And this, of course, affected their style and their repertoire. And the mill companies encouraged this development by bringing in music teachers, particularly from foreign countries. They had guys from Italy and from Norway and from Germany who came in and taught the children of the mill workers. And so they ended up learning tunes that they wouldn't have otherwise learned uh, more Tin Pan Alley commercial type music, but they learned to play it on their native instruments, banjos and fiddles and guitars and so on and so forth. Now, some of these musicians got out of the mill system with these very instruments. Uh, they ended up playing banjos for a living or playing fiddle for a living, and they would play for square dances, and very often on Friday or Saturday night, uh, the mill workers would gather in one of the houses, one of the mill houses. They'd move all the furniture out of the front rooms. Uh, they'd put uh, something down on the floor, something like cornmeal, uh, to give traction. And the workers would all dance, you know, in the front of the mill house. Uh, and they'd play, I guess you could call it millbilly music. You know, they would play uh, music that came out of the hills of Franklin County, Patrick County, Floyd County. Uh, but they, they would all uh, dance, and it was almost like a way to let off the tension and the you know, hard work that they had put in uh, during the week. And, of course, some of the mill workers uh, ended up recording tunes about that mill work, and you wonder why there weren't more cotton mill songs. There were quite a few, but you wonder why there weren't more. But many of these songs, of course, were critical of the mill work and the system they were in, and I suspect you didn't want to record too many songs that the boss man might hear you know, they could buy phonograph records for their Victrolas, and the result was you might lose your job, you know, over a song that you might record. One of my favorites was written by a cotton mill worker down in Hall River, North Carolina. He worked in what was called Granite Holt Mill, and he wrote a song in the 1890s, around 1900, called the Cotton Mill Blues, and I think this is one of the more powerful songs, and the guy who recorded it uh, was a banjo player. He lived in Belmont, North Carolina. His name was Wilmer Watts. And he had a band called Wilmer Watts and the Lonely Eagles. And remember, there were more than 600 cotton mills with a 150-mile radius of Charlotte, North Carolina, by 1929. So Wilmer Watts would have been speaking to a very large audience uh, with, with this music and with a song. One of the reasons I love the old-time music is because it was bona fide. Those people knew what they were talking about. They walked the walk, talked the talk, they lived the life. Got the cotton mill blues. Got a cotton mill blue. Got a cotton mill blue.